what is up everybody so this is going to be part two of this video learning to read order flow for beginners so if you haven't watched that video you're probably going to want to watch that video if you're new to order flow trading this is it for you you want to you want to learn how to get better at reading order flow this is the video series for you so what i did was i took these one tick scalps that I talk about in this video. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go fucking watch it. Um, so I talk about taking one tick drills for a month. Okay. I want to show you how to do that. Um, so that way you have a better understanding how to read the tape a little bit better. So you know what you're looking for when you attempt these things, because these one tick scalps they need to be done in specific areas you can't just do them wherever you want uh, it won't work that way if the market gets too volatile they're too difficult to do okay now full disclosure let's look at this pnl we're only going to be looking at this section of the pnl from the 100 dollar win up okay this is me fighting for one trade now here's the thing I don't fight this many times for a trade. However, this was a special thing that had specific context that made sense to be aggressive when it comes to fighting for it. So hold on real quick. Ah, there we go. Something just popped up on the screen. Again, this is special circumstances, and I don't fight for trades this many fucking times, okay? I just don't do it. Again, special context went into why I did this. However, the lesson and the takeaway from this is this is a good example of how developing your skill to taking one tick winners for a month can help you with your actual trading and taking bigger setups, okay? I wholeheartedly believe that the best way to trade, no matter how big of a time frame trader you are, scalping to enter, in my opinion, in my opinion, is the best way to enter trades, okay? Scalping you, because it keeps your risk low, it keeps your risk tight, instead of having a stop and having your stop get hit all the time, okay? At least in the ES, I think running hard targets and hard stops is very difficult to do without your stop getting hit all the time. Um, I definitely believe in reading order flow to confirm entries and exits. I mean, that's why you're here, right? You want to learn how to read it better because it allows you to listen to the market instead of just putting out hard targets and hard stops. Because if you just do that all the time, why are you reading order flow now you might be reading order flow to get a little bit better understanding and look listen there's no there's nothing wrong with putting out hard stops and hard targets there's nothing wrong with that however if you want to keep your shit as tight as possible learning to do these one tick drills will help you hit more precise entries in the real world of trading when it comes to hitting bigger setups and for me, that's what works for me. So for those of you who want to attempt this, this is going to be a great learning experience for you. This is me actually doing one tick drills until the trade actually runs. The only difference is instead of taking profits, I'm trying to get the trade to run a little bit. So I don't immediately take it off for a one tick win. Whereas you would when you do this drill. So I'll let you know when you should be taking the trade off um however just keep in mind this is me actually trying to get the thing to run at the same time okay so keep that in mind this is going to be a great learning experience of why that exercise works so well well we'll also look at this last trade down here uh because it literally happens a few seconds after the 100 dollar win so we'll take a look at that as well which has nothing to do with this exercise i'll just throw that in as a bonus so what we want to do is, um, let me pull up the trading screen and let's get some context, okay? So this is literally 10 minutes till close. 
this is at all time highs as of now uh, or whatever's happening here this is currently all time highs okay for this specific day so keep that in mind this is new highs um, now one thing you need to know is exactly 10 minutes before close there's always a influx of volume there's something called auction on close and somewhere in the time frame 10 minutes before the actual market closes there's something going on with this auction on close process and what auction on close is you, you guys can look it up if you want just look up auction on close um, it allows larger traders to get a fair price uh, without the market slipping around on them um, so it's just this auctioning on close process I'm not going to explain too much about it but what you need to know is there's uh, a huge influx of volume so see how there's a volume spike on this heat map notice how we kept hitting this 0250 there's size resting here so we hit it once we hit it twice okay and we're pinning up against it so buyers are pretty aggressive at pushing the market up into it and sellers are not being aggressive at shoving the market down their defense is pretty good because they're absorbing quite a bit but buyers are being very relentless at trying to get through here so after 250 hits because i'm chicago time so uh what is it 350 new york time we have this impulse down and you don't ever want to be a trade you don't want to be in a trade right when 250 hits you, you never want to be in a trade especially if you're close to the spread because uh you can get totally fucked up on on that however after 250 hits the market starts coming back up to 0250 okay it's hit it two times already i know there's a high probability on the third go it's going to want to go through it now the thing is if it goes through this there's a high probability that it might spike up to maybe 04 or something and roll back in very quickly okay so an old style an old method i used to use and i think i have older videos on it is i would set a resting market order at 0275 and let the market uh get me in automatically as it pops up um that doesn't work that well because you can experience slippage and if the market pops through 0250 it can go through it so quickly and drop in very rapidly however there's a chance that it might run to 05 and take out 05 and keep running now there's further context to understand here is i'm a huge auction market theory guy and according to bigger time frame analysis there's a high probability that we are going to have a push up even higher so I'm looking at that in conjunction with this resting size and how aggressive buyers are right here on a macro perspective to try to fight my way into this trade. Now, I want to get in a little bit early. I want to get in earlier so that way when it's getting stuck up here, um, I can at least get out if the trade spikes up and comes back down relatively quickly so I don't take on a loser or I can cut it for a small win so I'm trying to get positioned into this thing early instead of getting in up here um, so I'm using the one tick drills essentially to attempt uh, to get into er to get into this early because there it could deflect off this 0250 it's it could deflect we, we really don't know but I want to get in slightly early Again, so that way um, I have a better chance of getting out of this thing if it just doesn't work. So what I want to do is I don't want you guys to look at anything else. In that last video, I talk about how you need to just look at your depth of market and tape. And that's it. I don't want you looking at anything else. So what I'm going to do is put on these blinders. So you're not going to be able to see anything else other than what you should be looking at when you attempt this monthly long uh, one tick sc scalp drills this is all you want to look at okay now it's totally up to you to run three tapes you don't have to run three tapes if you're not familiar with 
why I run three tapes. I have a video on it, which I want to show you guys real quick. You need to probably go watch that because this is going to have heavy tape reading in it. I have this video. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, this one. How to read time and sales with trade example. Go watch that if you've not watched it first. Um, and then you also want to watch, um, obviously, this learning to read order flow for beginners video. And then I also definitely recommend, if you've not done it, uh, where is it? This video, how to become a quick, a quicker trader. You really need to understand some concepts in here. So let's take a look at this. So this is the spread. This is where the bids meet the offers. If you click on this blue box, that's a market buy. If you click on this blue box down here, that's a limit buy. Market sell on the red box, limit sell on uh, the box with the number. So you need to know how this spread works. You need to know wh what you need to click and what you need to click to break even, okay? So just a quick recap. Again, you wanna watch this shit four ways in, two ways out. If I was to limit buy this 57 and I get filled, in order for me to break even, I can click this market sell button right here, okay? So that's how I can break even relatively quickly. And if you probably notice in that P&L I showed you, there's quite a few break-evens in here. Getting good at break-evens is so paramount. One break-even is equal to like three and a half or four. Um, basically, you can get three and a half to four break-evens, and that's equal to a one-tick loss in the ES. So you can take break-evens. Taking break-evens is definitely better than taking a tick of loss. So be aware of that. You can get about three to four of these things uh, before it's equal to a one tick loss in the actual ES. So, and, and I'm including commissions in it, about $3.50. So let's do some math real quick. So at about $3.50 for a round turn, what is it? You make $12.50 uh, on a loss. So a loss would be $12.50 for a tick plus $3.50 for commission. That's $16. So how many times can $3.50 go into that? So let's do the math. 16 divided by 350, you get 4.57 trades. You can do 4.57 break evens before it's equal to one tick of loss in the ES. So that's why break evens are really important to uh, get good at, in my opinion, especially for this exercise. So you don't want to use just one type of order. When you do the exercise, you're trying to work just the limits. OK, whatever side you're trying to work on, you want to work just the limits to get into these things, um, because if you're going to get out, you can market order out. So when you limit in. Uh, the pro is you get the better price. So I have two ways to buy in buy this thing. If I market buy, I'm getting a worse price on the spread, but I get in immediately. OK. So if I was the market buy here and I immediately market order out for a sell, that's a one tick loss. If I market order buy in and I want to get out for a break even, I got to wait in the fucking queue over here. However, if you limit in, the con is you got to wait in the queue, but you're getting the better price on the spread. So if I limit in here, I'm in. But the pro is I can market order out immediately without waiting and just break even. So limits do have an advantage in that sense. They both have pros and cons, and you need to learn how to use both order types because market sells are very powerful for helping you break even. Okay. So watch this, watch those three videos if you haven't. Watch those three videos. Okay. And just a quick thing, I talk about reviewing trades in, that, in this video down here. Uh, new to order flow, I talk about, somebody asked me, how do you review the trades? Look, dudes, I got these, full trade reviews. Watch all of these fucking videos to get an idea of how I do it and mimic it. Nobody barely watches these, 106 views, 139 views, 112 views, 106 views. I got a lot of fucking videos with actual fucking trades. Mimic those videos. Like, I mean, dude, 184 views. I guess the thumbnail's not pretty enough. Uh, 484 views. Um, the This video has full-on 
trading this video does this video has full-on trading this video has full-on trading okay this video has full-on trading i have a shitload of videos and all of those videos i'm reviewing my trades and sharing them with you so mimic that style if you want to learn how to review your trades okay obviously these are one tick scalps it's going to be different so again let's get into this let's turn on the blinders because i don't want you guys looking at anything else okay you're not ready for it and uh you're just gonna not be focusing on what's important and you're not going to be developing um skills in the right spot because you're going to get all caught up on charts and shit. so you you need to earn the right to look at charts and if you came from a background of looking at charts that's a terrible habit because you're going to be too focused on it and you're not going to be paying attention to the order flow so you need to spend a month not looking at charts and then once you really start to get the hang of the order flow then you can add that shit in okay so again the context is the market dropped in uh and i'm gonna fight to get through this 0250 all right um give me a second here Okay, so I go for this 0150. Let me explain what's going on here. So uh, the market drops in. Okay. Notice we want to look at the tape. Okay, this is this tape is filtered at 20 lots and up. And this tape over here is not filtered at all. Okay, and it's important that I have the price on the mid-size tape because these mid-size orders are what actually move the market. Now, retail moves the market as well, which anything sub 20, I consider retail. Now, it could be a large trader breaking up his order into smaller lots. That does happen. But for the most part, uh, 20 lots and up are what's going to really get the market cooking and moving. Not always. It depends on the type of day. But for today, it, it does. It, that's how it's working. So... I like this. You have all of these big buy lots that come in. You got a 27 at 850, a 43 at 01 even, 50 at 0150, 20 at 0150, and 30 at 0175. So I know there are big buyers here and they're aggressively market ordering in. Remember, market orders is the worst price on the spread compared to working limits. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying, I want to get below this 0175. So the market dips in a little bit. I'm kind of waiting for it to stabilize because the thing is the market moves really quickly. Okay. In order for these drills to work, you need it to stabilize and get kind of stuck in a specific zone. Okay. Now sellers are coming in and hitting 0150. Okay. That's not good. See, the market's kind of moving up and down like four ticks right there. So I had this 105 lot come in. I like that. So look at right here at 01. This goes, a, the price is getting stuck here, and there's that big bid comes in, and the price pops up. 39 buys 01 even. Okay. So I go for 0150. I feel that this entry is a little premature. Because I am expecting larger buyers to hit 0175. I feel like I got into this a little bit too early. And I got in right when selling is hitting. So that's kind of an example of me just not reading it very well. But now it starts working out. That's good. It's starting to go against me. But I still have larger buyers hitting 0175 right here. Which is good. And I have them hitting the 0150. And now I have this large bid behind me. Notice where my mouse is. I'm covering for a break even. Remember in that last picture, I'm here at 0150, right? I can mark it order out immediately for a break even. And again, what you would do is put a limit here at this 0175 and you would have already gotten filled. So, I mean, look when I get into the thing. So what you would do is you would get in obviously i don't think that was the best and you would immediately click where the 71 is because that's one tick above and you would have gotten filled there you would have made your first tick okay so that's an example of how it works is you're looking for larger buyers 
or sellers to pay the shittier price and you want to get one tick below that. So obviously I'm holding it. So I'm going to walk you through this as well. Even though this isn't theoretically the exercise anymore, I'll just walk you through it so you can understand what I am trying to do and how you can translate it into a longer hold. Again, when you do the exercise, don't take more than a tick. I want you guys to take one tick and get really fucking good at that. Okay? You'll thank me later if you actually do what I say. So I'm covering this thing. You got uh, 22 lots that hit 0175. That's okay. I'd rather it be like a 50 lot or something bigger, but that's still decent buying all back to back. Now, the importance of having this midsize tape is um, 22 and 31. Look where they are right here on the unfiltered tape. Now, see this 20 lot and this other 20 lot? You can't even see it on this retail tape anymore. So it's important for me to know when clusters of midsize buying and selling is coming in. And again, if you're trading 20 lots, you do have a pretty big account, okay? And not as big as somebody who's swinging 100 lots, but it's imperative we focus on them. And this tape reading style does not work in other futures markets because they're thinner or thicker. So uh, this style of tape reading works well in the ES, okay? So for those of you who are trying to trade other shit, like the NQ, that shit only has one, three, four lots that trade it. Okay, so you're not going to be able to run a 20 lot filter. And that market is very difficult to do this exercise in. Okay. So I'm covering it. See how it's tweaking up and down? I don't like that. Um, I have some larger lots hit 0150. So this, this is a... I'm not reacting very well on this one at all. I should have been out of it. So, see, right here I decide I'm going to get out of it because it keeps tweaking up. So I took a one tick win. So let me explain what's going on here. And also, I'm manually clearing out these market orders with a hotkey. Because I do want to kind of watch. I know I'm watching the tape, but I also want to watch the pace of them filling in right here. So see how that's 20 lots? The market briefly ticked up, but whatever bid was here, the sellers immediately knocked it back down. Okay, now watch. It's going to tweak up again. So it tweaks up, but then it falls right the fuck back in. So this 0175 isn't going bid and staying bid. When you see this type of price action, that's called tweaking. Uh, and that's not good. See, it did it three times now. So it's tweaked up and down three times. Watch. I'm not going to pause it. So it's tweaked up once, twice, three times. And this offer keeps reloading. This is a small offer. I know I have 116 bid, but there's somebody's iceberging here. That's not good. It's tweaked th up and down three times. So there's a high probability it might go against me. And I just want to be done with this and reposition. And look how long it's taking to get out of this trade, too. So that's not good. So now it goes up and stays up. So I kind of cut it premature. That's okay. So what I'm trying to do is I want to see aggressive buying come in. So I decided to go in on this 50. So there's aggressive buying on 0175 and 02 even. Now, this is... This is one-way volume. So, okay, see see how there's only volume printing at 0175? It's not really printing up here at 02 even, and it's barely printing at 0150. There's volume flooding in on just this price. It's not really printing up here or down here. I don't want to enter on that. Yes, I can get the fill, but um, I want to be just below it. And also, I have a larger buyer hitting the 0175s, but so are sellers. So so I get the fill on it. You have 52 that hit 0175. Um, but you also have a 75 lot that hit 0150. So that's not good. There's a big seller that's hitting my entry. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the fuck out of it. Okay. And as soon as the market ticks down against you, 
typically the offer is going to be relatively small. So you can see how it ticked against me. So look at this. And I actually try to cancel that order. Okay, see, now that it's ticked against me, I can't market order out. If I was the market order out, I'd take a one tick loss. However, I'm going to go ahead and queue up in this limit. Um, it's small enough that I should be able to break even, and we have enough volume flow that I should be able to get in, get out for a break even. Now, here's the problem. If you're trading the ES in the overnight, you don't have enough volume to be able to pull this kind of shit off. Having a good pace of volume is so essential to being able to do this uh, relatively quickly. So I try to work my way out and see how it's tweaking up. And all of a sudden, that offer starts to pump up. And boom, there would be no way I could get out. So I didn't hesitate. Oh, shit. What did I fucking do? Uh, give me a second. Um. Yeah, here we go. And I'm getting ready to cancel that. Like, I wanted to cancel it. I clicked it, and I just, it didn't cancel. So I don't hesitate, because it's staying pinned here. Watch it tweak up, tweaks down. See how it's tweaking that? Watch that offer disappear a few times. That means it's tweaking up ever so slightly. See, and then all of a sudden, that offer starts to get big, and then the market just drops in. So I can't hesitate to get out of these things. So I broke even on that. And I actually think I fucked up on it too. So whatever happens is like, not only do I get out of the position, but I end up getting in short. So something happened to where I might have actually added an extra contract to it. So what I do is I hit the flat key. So when you're looking at this, these two back-to-back -back break evens, that second one was a mistake entry. It does happen, but because of the nature of what's going on and I, what I realized I did, uh, I hit the flat key, which is a market order, um, and the flat key. Uh, so I'm red in. So what it does, it'll hit this empty blue box and it'll market me out for a break even. So that was an accident getting into that. So I'm just waiting for this to kind of pan out. I want to see buyers aggressively hitting because it's it, it, if you look at it, it's in, it, from here down, the tape is kind of mixed. It's both buying and selling hitting at the same time. I don't like that. I want to see more heavy buying coming in, which is happening now. So again, these buyers are still interested in 0175s. Uh, so that's good. There's there's big buyers willing to still pay 0175s. Okay. So and there's more big buyers paying for 0175s um than there are sellers currently. So I'm willing to um and there's no big sellers hitting this 50 down here. So the market stabilized a little bit. So I want to clear out these um old orders. There we go. I clear out the old orders. So I know, look, they another 20 lot printed 0175. So I know big buyers are probably going to hit it again. Probably going to hit it again. Uh, and here's the thing with trading. It's easier to predict the next second, the next tick, than it is to predict the next five minutes, two minutes, one minute, or how, however, whatever. Okay? So that's the beauty about reading order flow is all you really need to do is attempt to predict the next few seconds, the next tick, and then you can kind of give it time to run in your favor. That's all I'm doing. So I'm not trying to predict the overall direction. Yes, I have 
setups and theories and all that shit, but they can fail. They can fail. You really never know who's going to come into the market and slap it down, right? So all I know is currently big buyers are willing to pay for 0175. So I want to get in uh, right below it. So it ticks down against me. I'm kind of covering this. See, that's not good. It's hit hit down there. And then it pops up. Okay. And so now I'm going to cover for that break even. Kind of holding it. That's a lot of one-way volume. I do not like that. Theoretically, I should be getting out of this. Yes, I have bigger buyers hitting 0150, but they they weren't coming in and hitting 0175. So theoretically, I need to work a break even at this point. And as soon as I hit it, it pumps up really quickly and it goes against me. So this is what happens when you hesitate. Now, let's go back to the entry on it. If you were to work this order, you would immediately come and place a, a sell order right here and then come and cover down here. So see, now it's embedding right there. You wouldn't get the fill on it. So right now, right now you would be wanting to break even because it's tweaking up and you got all this one way volume at 0150. It's not really flowing in up here anymore. And being in the area where all the volumes trading isn't really that good. So right there, I should click it. It was 16, but now it pumps up I'm, and it keeps tweaking up and down. So I'm too slow on it. I literally click it right when it goes 88 lots. So I had plenty of opportunity to get out of the fucking thing for a break even. And I don't. So I'm going to have to pony up and just take a one tick loss. That's fine. Okay, then it goes fine up. So I go for it again. And I know it's happening so quick and it doesn't make sense to some of you. But you need to learn how to process this shit quickly. And that's, again, what these drills are for. I'm able to quickly identify what's going on within the order flow that there's a reason I came in really quickly on that. So, I don't think this is it. This is, yeah, where I just hesitate a little too long. Again, I'm trying to get this fucking trade to run. So, you would never get the one tick on this specific trade. It just wouldn't fill you. So, I'm like, okay, this isn't good. I need to minimize, I need to do damage control on it. So, then it starts flying up. And now I'm getting really good buying coming in into the 50s. Okay, and notice how there's heavy volume trading at 0175s. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to get in below it. The market ticks up. I'm banking on these guys to hit 75s again because they just did it. They're doing it again. So theoretically, you could work the one tick right there and you would be out. You would have made a profit. And boom, 96 lot hits 02 even. That is beautiful. I fucking love that. Um, it's not quite a block order because my block tape is filtered at 99 and up. So this guy's flying under the radar. Some of these large traders know that people are running 100 lot filters. That's why I run 99 lots to try to catch the somebody below it. But honestly, that 96 sticks out like a sore thumb on this mid-size tape. Now, a shortcut to reading your mid-size tape is to look at just the first numbers. Don't worry about reading the numbers to the right of it. So if I see a 9, I know that's in the 90s. If I see a 3, that's in the 30s. Most of the orders are going to be in the 20s. Okay, that 6 sticks out to me because it's larger than 2, right? So the trick is to kind of just read the first digit. Um, not the whole fucking thing. But again, knowing where these mid-sizes are hitting is so important. It doesn't matter on retail because there's so many one-lots and shit. Um, so now I'm sitting pretty, right? So now I'm sitting pretty. Obviously, you would be out of the trade, but I'm trying to get this thing to run. So I got a block, 151, that hit 0225. So I'm having 
really large sellers hit in these two prices up here. That's good. Now look at this. Look how bad this is absorbing. This is absorption, and you don't need some sort of special shit to let you know about absorption. You don't necessarily need a fucking footprint. Uh, I know Jigsaw Heat Map has these little balls that pop up called Circle Tuner or something. It shows you a circle where there's absorption. If you're looking at your DOM, you'll know if there's absorption. Okay, so like look at this 0225, and I'm constantly keeping an eye on the spread. What's the spread? It's these two ticks. Okay, that's where the price is currently trading, and I want to always be following the spread. Just because my trade's working now doesn't mean I shouldn't be like managing the fucking thing. Because every time it ticks up, I want to act like it's a new trade, essentially. So when I'm looking at this spread, I'm looking at this spread from, okay, this is the new point where I need to pay attention. Because, I mean, if sellers start hammering this O2, I need to consider getting the fuck out of this. So look at this. Look at that. Watch how many numbers print right here. I mean, obviously 151 hit it and then it reloaded. And just watch the sheer amount of numbers that are printing on both. This is two-way volume. Look at that. And this is like 20 lots and it's just not going away. It keeps reloading. It's 17 lots. It reloads. It's 18 lots. Okay, well, they're ticking it up, but sellers are immediately slamming down here. I mean, we have a 75 lot that had 0225. So uh, this absorption is fucking retarded. This is like a lot of absorption on this price. Somebody's reloading the shit out of this offer. Now buyers are starting to not hit as aggressively. Notice how the the pace of the blue orders coming in is starting to slow up. Pace of tape is lowering. Okay, they're not able to get through this shit. Look, they threw an 85 lot at 0225. They threw a 53 lot at 0225. Okay? And every time it ticks up, a large seller is hitting back. So buyers are starting to get fatigued. They're running out of fuel, essentially. So now they tick it up. Now it's staying up. That's fucking great. So maybe they finally breached that point. Now I need to look at the spread from this perspective. It's 390 versus 124. I know this 390 is real. How do I know this 390 is real? Because when we look at the heat map, that 390 has been sitting there for a long time. Okay? If a large order just comes out of nowhere, typically it's not that legitimate. And it's not going to be really holding the market uh, from trading through it. This, however, has been sitting here. So I know this is legitimate, and it's probably going to continue to hold the market down, and it's going to be really hard to get through. Obviously, it's been holding the market down. So the longer a large order sits, the more legitimate it is. So let's go back to the blinders. See, the pace of tape is low. Look, there's barely anything trickling in up here. See how it's just 46 lot forever, 58 lot. It's just so slow. Look at that pace. All of a sudden, there's 163 that just hit right down here. Look at that. Watch it just boom. Boom, that's bad. Okay, a 96 lot hits 0225. So I know statistically, there's a large seller willing to hit back right here. Okay? And what's going on is the guy that was probably absorbing this right here, this um, offer, he's probably hitting in with a market order at 0225. So not only did he work the limit to absorb a bunch of orders, but now he's working market orders to get the same fucking price. Okay? So that's probably what's happening. So obviously we're not out of the woodworks. Okay, now we got some good buying coming into the 0250s. I love that. And the trick is don't read the 38s. You want to read... 0250 and you want to really read these point these decimal place digits okay that's what you want to really be reading is these decimals if i see 25 i know it's 0225 if i say c50 i know it's 0250 okay i don't need to look at the 38 and there's no way to filter that off so 
if I could, I would, but it doesn't matter. I look at the first digit and the last decimal places, and that's a shortcut. But it's to the point where I can read the whole, I can read the whole entire thing, and it doesn't. I just have the ability and the skills to read the entire order and process it all. And I'm getting to the point where I can read a lot of the retail tape as well. It takes time. It takes fucking time to learn this shit. Okay. Like I was where you were at some point. Okay. And look at this things all stalemated out. Now I'm starting to see back to back mid size orders hit. I know they're just 30 lots, but that's not good. This thing's all pumped up to 500. That's really bad. Um, see, like, I got this 223 lot coming in. That's above average in size, but that means nothing to me, right? The, the buyers are attempting to pin it here, but this offer is so stout. It's going to take a fuckload of orders to get through that shit. Look, now see how there's, like, no pace of tape. Like, if you look at these inside columns, shit's barely trickling in. That's not good. And if you were to do your one-tick scalps, you do not want to do it here, and you especially don't want to do it against large size like that. There's not enough volume to even do this, and you're running risk of the market just popping down on you. So this is why you want to get into this shit early. So I'm still got good shit hitting O250s, but... Now I got sellers hitting right the fuck back. Now the tape, notice how the tape is mostly blue. Now it's starting to transform and start to phase into red at this point. That's not good. And I mean, there's these 75 lots that keep hitting at 0250. I mean, look, there's a 75 lot there at 0225, a 75 lot at 0225. That's probably the same fucking guy. Okay. FYI, it's probably the same player. So there's a large seller. Now, you see how big that shit went? That just got bombarded with a fuckload of retail trades as well as some mid sizes. So there could be a machine gun algo coming in right here. And what a machine gun algo is, it's a fuckload of one lots that start just coming in very quickly. It's like if I take a button and I hit the one lot sell button and I just keep pounding the fuck out of it, except for an algo is doing it very quickly. So watch how this number just zips to the moon. See, and it's all one lots mostly. I mean, there's some fives and threes and shit in there, but um, that was a machine gun algo. They're to be ignored. It's really means nothing. Because the context is there's somebody up here absorbing and selling larger size. And that's what matters to me. So you got an 84 hitting at the 0225. That gives me hope. That's a large order, right? Now that fucking offer is pumping up again. Which sucks. So I clear out the orders so I can see the aggression. And, and boom, a block order hits 02 even. That's bad. Now I need to consider to get the fuck out of this thing. Okay, I'm, I can market order out for a one tick win or I can try to work the limit for a two tick win. And this shit is loading up. Boom, that's good, that's good. Right, I got these 200 bids right here. I like that. Now the, oh, shit, my bad. Let's go back in time. There's that block, right? Um, see, and I need to get the fuck out of it at this point. So I'm trying to get the one tick win, but at the same time, I'm covering for a break even. So this is an example of how I can... S I take one tick scalps and I'm not trying to take one tick scalps, right? For me, I'm always trying to exploit a big picture idea, but if I can attempt to get paid on a failing trade and get a tick or two or three out of it, then I'm going to go for it. Um, because in the end that does add up and that can buffer, um, that can buffer a bigger trade that where you don't, where you can't really necessarily scalp into it where you kind of have to just get in. Um, 
So taking these small little wins instead of taking a full on stop loss, that shit adds up and that'll buffer other trades because you'll kind of building a padding in there. But I'm not trying I'm not trying to get one two tick wins. This is just a trade that's fucking not working. Right? So watch how it just falls in. Like, I mean, it's just so aggressive. I'm not really looking at the tape at this point. I'm more focused in here and the aggression of the orders, right? I'm more so looking at the tape when I'm about to try to get into the trade and when I'm trying to make sure it's going to work out. But anytime the tr trade starts to get really close to my entry, I'm focusing on the market orders in here. Now, the reason my tape is here is my eyes don't need to travel as far to read the fresh orders coming in. That's why I try to keep the tape as close to the actual spread on the DOM as possible so my eyes aren't traveling the fuck across the screen. Because for some reason, most traders have their tape all the way at the top of the screen. Whereas the spread's usually going to be in the center, the eye travel is too much. And as you're probably seeing... You only have a few seconds, if that, to react. So it's easier to keep everything tight and close. Right? So I'm trying to get the fuck out of this. I'm covering for a break even. Where you put your mouse matters. Okay? My, my fucking mouse cursor isn't across the screen. Right? So I'm always trying to cover to get the fuck out of this. Because it milliseconds matter. So I go for it. Obviously, I drop the mouse down real low. That's kind of a shitty habit. I need to not do that. So that's in a, that's me reviewing the trade. I shouldn't drop my mouse down that fucking far. See, and I, but I immediately pop it up to cover this area so I can break even. But I, So while I'm trying to cover a break even, I'm trying to work a one tick win at the same fucking time. So if that one tick win isn't getting filled on the queue... That's why seeing your queue position definitely helps. So having a good depth of market obviously matters. It's, it's not perfectly accurate, but it's close enough that I kind of know if I'm going to get filled or not. So if I'm just not getting filled and my bid is starting to erode away by aggressive market orders, I need to just hit the fuck out of it. So obviously it pops back up. But in that moment, in that time, it just didn't look that way, and the market was telling me, this is going down. How did I know that it would just reverse there? I really don't. Obviously, once you start to develop actual setups, um, you'll be able to identify potential turning points, um, not necessarily using order flow, but using actual setups I mean, for instance, a simple support and resistance line or a channel, shit like that, um, you'll be able to identify potential turning points from that perspective. So, but in this case, I mean, sellers are aggressive. They're just not letting loose. Buyers are also aggressive, but they can't get through. And my worry is, are buyers getting fatigued? Here, because the market, if it's going to shit down, it's going to run down so quickly, I'm going to get stopped out. And that's very expensive. Like, I'm not trying to get stopped out. I run an emergency stop, only in case something fucked up happens. But I'm trying to keep these trades as tight as possible. For the most part, there's certain setups where I need to find the best entry and just give it a little bit of room to breathe where I let it go against me a tick or two or three. Um... So I'm not always aggressively fighting for trades in this style uh, because I have specific setups where I try to hit it as best as possible. But the problem is if I keep aggressively fighting for something, um, it could do something like this to where I had a good entry and it could just pop up and run. So at this point, I know that it's starting to pin here. So let's look at the auction vista. So it pulled down, but now it's pinning it again. So this is the fourth time it's really came up into it. And sometimes you need a pullback to get through stout resistance. Uh, think of it like a battering ram, you know, when the, the SWAT team's going to uh, bust down your door because you're smoking pot and they want to come in and shoot your dog. Um, 
they use a battering ram to get in, right? They don't put it against the door and just push it down, right? They swing it back. And that's kind of what this is, is essentially is battering ramming. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> put on the blinders again. So now there's definitely a high probability this shit's going to go through. If we look at the tape, I got good size hitting O2s and O225s. So there's no way in fuck I'm going to be able to get down here again. So I'm kind of watching this shit. So you have good two-way volume, and now you just have a fuckload of orders hitting 0250. So I know that currently bigger buyers are hitting 0250 right the fuck now. I have two-way volume. So remember how we were seeing volume just go one way? Now it's two-way. Not only do I have sellers hitting the bid, but I also have buyers hitting the offer at the exact same time. So this is called two-way volume. One-way volume is like we've seen earlier where it's staying... The market's ticking up and down, but the volume is only coming in at one price. So when you have two-way volume, this one-tick drill is a lot easier to do, but you don't always get that opportunity. A lot of the time, it's going to be one-way volume. But notice the volume coming down here on the sell side isn't... It's mostly retail lots. It's not bigger sellers. Up here, I have bigger buyers willing to hit. So I know in this moment in time that this might be worth it, a shot. So I'm covering for the break even. And it just didn't work. So I'm trying to get the fuck out of it immediately. Because right here, I'm just way too close to an area that could just potentially fail. So that's why I'm extra quick on trying to get this break even. However, if you were to do your one tick scalp, here's the fill. You would be trying to work this 314, so you immediately click there while trying to cover a break even. You probably want to get the fill. So you want to get your one tick. So now you want to consider getting the fuck out for a break even, just like I'm doing. So I immediately, I don't hesitate. So I get a Q advantage on it because I clicked it at just the right time. Notice how quickly it pumped up to 141. I'd hate to be 142 in the Q, but I have a Q advantage now because I didn't hesitate. So now it's now I'm 29Q, which is good. Uh, trying, trying to work it. Boom, there we go. So I go for it again because I, again, I'm watching this tape, okay? And I, I got this good bid behind me, which is nice, but it, it may or may not be real. But they're hitting 0250s again. They hit 0225 with a 60 lot. Boom, get in right the fuck as it zips to the moon. I'm trying to get the fuck out of it immediately. Why am I trying to get out of it immediately? Okay, like I said before, there's a high probability that this thing is going to zip the fuck up and come right the fuck back down. So what you didn't see is remember how we've been seeing absorbing and reloading here? So these limit orders, like I'm going to literally go frame by frame. So here's me getting filled. What do you see on the tape? 1,500. Orders hit 0250. Okay, here's what you need to understand. These limit orders you see coming in, they have a refresh rate. You can change that refresh rate on your depth of market. My limits refresh 10 times per second. 10 times per second. However, it didn't, there, there's, you're, these limits are always changing, right? What you're seeing is a snapshot. Think of it like a flip book, okay? It's a flip book, you know, where you draw a picture of a stick figure in a book and you're flipping the pages, okay? This isn't smooth. This isn't smooth. The thing is, these limit orders are constantly changing. But all you're seeing is it change 10 times per second. So you're not seeing the most accurate changes. Now, you can change your refresh rate to where it updates 20 times per second. And you might have seen that quickly flash to 1,500. But the problem is, if your refresh rate is too high, there's going to be lag. You're, you're making your computer compute more information. And it's going to create lag to when there's a move, a sharp move, the higher refresh rate won't move as quickly as the lower refresh rate. 
okay? So if I, and I've ran extensive tests to where you have a DOM side by side next to another DOM, and what you do is you have one with a 10 second refresh rate and a 20 second refresh rate. And if you got like an iPhone or whatever, and you, what you do is you record the footage in slow motion and then replay it. And you'll notice the DOM that has the 10 second refresh rate will jump the next three to four ticks before the DOM that has a 20 second refresh rate. So you're trying to create a balancing act by having the right refresh rate. And I find 10 seconds is plenty. And this, this offer, there was an offer that flashed at 1500 at 0250, but it happened so fucking quickly, you did not see that. It happened so fucking quickly, you can't see that. Even if you had a high refresh rate, your eyes would have not been able to pick that up. The, the time in sales is what's letting us know that fucking happened. And like, look, this, this, so this thing reloaded. There's an iceberg here. Look where we're at. So what I'm going to do is, look, we have not traded a tick into 0275 yet. But look how much large buying has hit on the tape. 0250, we have a 33 lot, a 33 lot, a 1500 lot, a 29 lot, um, a 115 lot, a 66 lot, a 25 lot, a 54 lot, a 29 lot, a 23 lot, a 29 lot. So that shit was well over 2,000. But it happened so quickly, and these market orders are coming in so fucking fast, you did not see that happen. This is why the time in sales is so fucking important. Okay? So let's put this back on. Oh, did I... I accidentally got rid of... Um, give me just a second. What I want to do is pull up my blinders again. Bear with me just... A second here, please. There we go. So, t all this is happening while I'm getting filled. Like, I'm not all the way in the market. One of my two lots is in the market. The other one's still coming in. But there is there is a natural lag but with this. But, again, you, just, you can only process so much information, guys. So look, I mean, fuck, dude, right there, right before it goes, watch. Like, literally, I've done frame by frame on this. I'll try to do frame by frame. See, look at that. So this is literally frame by frame. So, look, you don't even see a 1500 lot here. It's at 250, but watch the time in sales. 1500 lots comes in. This doesn't even change because it hasn't refreshed yet. So all these orders just come in on it. This is literally frame by frame. So 33 and a 60 lot. Where is that? Uh, where's that 33 and that 60 lot? Right here. So from this point up, literally comes in so quickly this has not refreshed yet that pumped up very high but it has not refreshed yet right and then i'm doing frame by frame still dune there it goes it refreshes the fit right look how big that order is in there right then 145 lots hit it it has not refreshed yet boom then it finally refreshes right and then boom, the motherfucker flies to the fucking moon. Okay? So I know by seeing all these block orders on my tape that that just took a fuckload of buying. Okay? Let's play it in real time. And look how it's getting stalled right here. It's, it's stalling right the fuck here. That is not good. There are so many contracts that just came the fuck in and now it's stalling out. And I know that, I know from this type of setup that this can happen and it can reverse in. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this thing can drop right the fuck in. That's why I'm trying to get into it early. 
So it's just not working. It's not running. I'm not willing to hang the fuck out. Because it could drop in so quickly. It didn't that time. It just didn't drop in that quickly. So what I'm trying to do... I'm trying to work the limit because I notice it's stalling here. I know it's stalling. So I try to work the limit there. The market drops in. I'm going to chase it on the limit side. I don't want to market order out. I want to get a fill because it's the better price on the spread. I cancel that order so I don't accidentally go short. And then I get it. Right? So look what happens. Look at the market just falling in. There ain't no big buyers anymore. Look, now it's falling back into this point. What the fuck just happened? 136 lot hits 0225. Remember we've established there's a large seller there? Well, he just came in. This motherfucker just absorbed a shitload of buy orders. And there was no buying to follow up that initial pop. And the seller is coming right the fuck back in. Okay? That that pop was not a stop run. That pop was a shitload of big orders coming in. Okay? The sellers did not fucking puke there. Okay? That's what just happened. And now the seller is coming right the fuck back in. He's confident in this crap. Okay? So th this is a, obviously a very large trader who just... And again, some of these large traders, they work multiple prices. But we have a large trader coming right the fuck back in. Now, let's switch up the context. Let's take that down. Let's switch up the context. Now, we just looked at the entire P&L. Hopefully, you learned something about taking the one-tick drills and what I am looking for and how you can apply this to that exercise um, and do that all month long. Okay? Don't sit there and try to get two ticks. Because if you develop the skill that I'm telling you to, it's going to benefit you substantially in your actual trading. Because what you just saw me do, like literally, like let's let's go back. Let's go back to right when the market melts down. I want you to watch this real time. I want you to watch this real time and just look at how quickly this really is going. We essentially paused it, but I want you to look at how quickly I'm actually trading in real time. So here we go. No pausing. These are all of the trades. So I'm also listening to Price Squawk. So my tape is making sound for every order that prints. Take it off because it's tweaking. Right there. I get good one-way volume at 0.175. I know bigger buyers are hitting it, so I'm going to get on the price below it get it uh, print down state offer so I want to get out of it I actually get back in short I market or our flat key out really quickly because that was the mistake trade so now the market's follow, following and I'm not too confident now we got a huge influx of buying on the tape I like that they're willing to hit 0175s I want it to stabilize a little bit now it's staying bid 0175 now, there we go. I know that there's a high probability they might hit 0175s again. So I'm covering the fucking trade. It's not working, so that's not good. So I have every opportunity to break even on this, but I don't. I should have broke even there. A little too late. A little, slightly too late. So I'm going to pony up and do damage control. All of a sudden, a mass influx of buying. I like that. I know they're hitting 0.175s, so I'm banking on that. 96 lot hits 0.2, that's good. 151 hits 0.225, I like that. 
that there's reloading on that 0225 offer. So it's reloading a lot. I don't I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So I'm covering to get out of this. Notice how I have the cursor between the two lines. I'm either going to limit or break or mark it. So I like to straddle that black line or or just that divider line. Forty four lots hit. It is just slowing down. Now it's more so selling coming in. The pace of tape slow down. I'm just letting them eat away at this order. Now more buying's coming in, which is good. Sellers are starting to step up to the plate. That fucking offers five hundred lots, that's not good. O250s. Okay, now sellers are really railing this motherfucker, and buyers are not hitting back. Buyers are not hitting back at all. We need to be a uh, bid O225 or bid O2 even. That's not good. Now we got a block order sell come in. Not good. I'm still holding. Hopefully, buyers step up. Nah, it's just a shitload of selling coming in. Way too much selling. I need to get out of this. I need to get out of it. Take a one tick win. Good buying. Really good buying. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this. I don't think I'm going to get in it. But I need to make sure there's solid buying on 0250 before I try to work the limit. There's solid buying there. Work the limit. Ah, it's tweaking down. I need to get the fuck out of it. Because this is a dangerous spot to be in. Period. Yeah, again, I want to be in before it. But it could have popped there. So that's why I'm trying it. So I'm going for it again right as the motherfucker blows up. It's stalling, stalling. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling. It can fall in. There we go. Took fucking forever to fill that order too. Now here's some context. We're going to go ahead and look at this last trade, which is 225 even. Um, this, oh, let me take this down. Uh, this right here. This last trade is a playbook trade, one of my better playbook trades. Um, obviously, we're really close to close. So theoretically, this trading the last five minutes is really dangerous. However, this is special circumstances for all of this. Trading the last 10 minutes is not usually a good idea. However, if the market is on the ragged edge of making a potential move, and you know this from previous context and setups, then this is important. So this is one of my best setups. I'm not going to break down the setup. I'm not going to explain the setup. That's not the point of this video. This is, I want you to just see what's happening here uh, in the order flow. This has, this is not a FOMO trade. It looks like a FOMO trade. Theoretically, the setup just happened, okay? And theoretically, I need to be looking for a short, but I don't really have time to get a short because the market's just selling off. So I know this is my setup. I'm looking for a, a pullback because I don't like to get in on the fucking edge. Now, right, right about here, see how I have SZ? That stands for size. So what does that mean? Um, I put an SZ where resting size has been on the heat map, and 800 is also a psychological level. Um, institutions love these even denominator numbers. A lot of institutions play around them, and there are institutions who only play those numbers, and they don't play anything else. So just keep in mind, large traders are doing different things for different reasons on different time frames at different prices. And retail traders in the ES is not enough to fill their liquidity needs. So big traders often go against each other and do different things. That's the reality of it. And retail traders have this stupid fucking theory that the big traders are after us and the big traders are always... They don't fucking call each other up on the phone 
Goldman Sachs does not call JP Morgan to see what they're doing. They don't do that shit, okay? They're doing different shit, right? And they need each other. I mean, obviously, there's a large seller who absorbed 1,500, 2,000 lots up here, more than that. Those are two large traders transacting with each other. That wasn't one person. So again, I mark where resting size is because that can be deflection zones at times. I know, mar the, I know typically the price will get caught on those areas. Even days later when the resting size is gone, there's some big guy that's still playing that shit and just adding to his position over the course of several days. Okay, because some of these big guys need multiple days to get in and out of shit. Okay, that's the advantage you have as a retail trader, not trading many lots, is you can get in and out immediately. They can't do that. So there's a key level here, obviously. So what I'm doing, and the key level is here, I'm looking for a slight pullback, but this is a key level, not just because of the psych level being 800 and not just because there's size sitting there. This is also a key level on a volume profile, not this volume profile, but like a composite profile. Uh, this is just like a 24 hour profile. I prefer to look at composite profiles. So there, this is also a key level. So what I'm doing is I know what this trade is. I know this trade has a high probability of continuing down in a very rapid fashion. And that's what it's doing. Sometimes this setup gives me time to get in. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm seeing if this key level is going to deflect the market up a little bit so I can sell the pullback. And it's just not happening. The market's hesitating at this point. And I, I kind of have to just go for it at this point. So I'm letting it see how it's stalling here. This is good. But I noticed there's a shitload of buying coming in on the tape, but the market's just not going up at all so i need to make a decision quickly and at this point in time i don't have the time to really see if bigger sellers are hitting because the fucking thing's just falling in quickly so at this point that sort of method we looked at isn't going to work right now and this is also a high probability setup for me so i have to trust my setup at this point i know what the setup is i know this is a key level I know I can't really hesitate much longer. So at this point, I kind of just have to take a shot. Um, it is stalling here, but I want this pullback to happen. This thing just pumped up the 200 lots. So I know sellers are coming in and aggressively defending some sort of pullback in the order flow. You can see that with the 610 that comes in. So let's look at it again. See, and then they're pumping that up too. So I'm kind of hoping that it will pull back and larger lots will hit that on the buy side. And as soon as I see this thing go to like 200, where is it? So I want that pullback to happen. This goes up to 200. I know at this point it's not. Sellers are putting in larger and larger offers to force the market down. And also there's a shitload of buying coming in in here, but the market's just not coming up. So that tells me sellers are also absorbing. Not only are they putting in a wall to prevent the market from coming up, but they're absorbing the fuck out of mid-size buyers at this point. And I, and I just really don't have time to react on this thing. I, It's either now or never, really. So I go for it literally at the nick of time. And this hundred and... So I, here's the mistake I made. I need to be covering myself up here, but I'm not. Notice how this 158 block order comes in, followed by an 83 at 98.50, but the market doesn't go up. Notice how it's offer. When I see a block order come in, and it's a buy order, and the market goes down as soon as it comes in, that tells me the buyers just don't have it at this point. And that's exactly what happens. So if you look at the fucking tape right here, 158, and the market doesn't even go up at this point. So, And look, now that offer drops in. So that offer pulled and dropped down right here to f kind of further force shove the market. So it's gone now. So right when I get into the trade, it kind of shows up. So it disappears, right? And then that comes in and then watch this offer starts to crank up right here. It just comes in out of nowhere. And what that kind of shit triggers algos 
that front run size, and that's exactly what's happening. So algos are algos that front run size are coming in in front of this thing, and they you'll see this in the DOM often to where these large sizes will come in and they're not getting filled. They're essentially shoving the market down. So now it's starting to stall up. Uh, I have, there's a bigger picture target, but the thing is we're so close to close that it's not gonna run to target. Cause this setup, when your setups are near close, it's probably not going to run the target. So what's happening now is notice this SZ. This is where previous size was, but I'm also looking at a composite profile and the market's starting to stall here. That for me, this is just a really solid fucking scalp and I need to consider cutting it because we're just getting way too close to close at this point. So I cut it there because of the stalling. And this is where size was at one point. It's not there anymore. But look how the market is getting absorbed like hell in here. And wherever the resting size is, it they tend to act as a support resistant flip zone. Again, you don't want to play these things outright. You want to have some sort of other system, but that's just a little thing I've kind of learned over time is to mark out where it resting size is. And look how it's literally only ticking one down. And this would come up to my entry at this point. So... For me, it was good to get the fuck out of it. See, and it just kind of like, it's no, you don't want to be sitting in that. There's just a point in time where you just take the scalp. So here's the exit. So let's watch the whole thing again right here. I'm in it. Right. And I, I have multiple targets until I hit my ultimate target. And this is one of my first targets. So for me, there's so much absorption going on down here that it's time to get the fuck out of it. I take it off. Yeah, I could get a little bit more, but no big fucking deal, right? My intention was to take the trade off. Wherever your intention was to take the trade off, that's what you do. It doesn't matter if you think it's going to run or not. That was my intention, okay? Was to play... The momentum and as soon as i see absorption it's time to get the fuck out of it so hopefully you guys learned something from this video hopefully this will help you with that exercise a lot better and this is real world examples of how that specific fucking exercise that might make no sense to some of you can be used to fight your way into better trades so that exercise has so many fucking benefits because you are reading order flow on the most macro microscopic level possible in order to pull off these one tick trades. Again, it's easier to predict the next few seconds than it is the next 30 seconds or the next one minute. And if you know that there is a large buyer or seller hitting into a specific price, you can work the price below them or above them, depending on what side you're trying to get in and on and rely on them buying a shittier price to to allow you to get into a slightly better price and you're relying on other participants to come in after that to continue to push the market again you're always just relying on somebody to buy shittier prices or to sell shittier prices if you're short that's how you trade right your moves are dependent on somebody getting in at crappier prices. So you're looking at if somebody's aggressive and willing to pay market orders for something, they're being aggressive. Market orders are aggressive orders. They're willing to pay a shittier price instead of working the limit. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully this clears up how to do that exercise and try to do exactly what I said in it. If you didn't watch those other fucking videos I told you to watch, you should probably go watch those other fucking videos. Um, and if you don't know how to review, there's so many fucking videos you guys aren't watching for whatever reason that has plenty of reviews. Mimic that, okay? All right, guys, have a good one.